Hello and welcome to another webcast brought to you by Nerd Enterprises Incorporated. We're doing a free webcast uh, here on payroll, how to book it correctly. It's uh, an area that uh, mistakes are commonly made on. And so I wanted to uh, help some people out with this one because I see it a lot. Coming up on Saturday, March 20th, we've got our live webinar on how to track your business using Microsoft Excel. This link here in the video that you're seeing, the green text, is live. You can click on that if you want to register if you're watching the original webcast. If you're watching this on YouTube, the link to the original webcast is below. You can click there or just visit our learning center at nerdenterprises.com and you'll see the learning center button in orange. Go in there and look for the category in live webinars and you'll find this uh, for Saturday, March 20th, 2010. And I want to get right into things here to allow plenty of time to review today's content and share my computer screen with you and I'll put that screen back up at the end just in case you uh, missed it. What we have here is a sample payroll report from a it's a replica that I created from a very popular payroll company here in the United States of America and I've laid it out the same way that they do and the common mistake that bookkeepers make is essentially you're gonna get three payments that come out of your account the first payment is going to be for the net pay, which in this case would be this number here. The second payment would be for the taxes, which would be this number here. Let's highlight them for you. And the third pay is going to be your fees. The fees come out separately, very easy to book. Payroll fees. These other two, not so easy. But the mistake that bookkeepers make is they book the net pay right here and they book that to whatever the wages account is or the salaries account is. And the second payment on the tax is they book to the payroll tax and expense account as if the whole expense belongs to the employer, which is also incorrect. So we've understated payroll and we've overstated the tax expense. <clears throat> and it may seem like it nets out the same, but it doesn't. It won't match the W-3 and uh, there's a few problems with it inherently. <clears throat> now most recently I've seen a situation where this was booked to the payroll taxes payable. What happens if you just book this whole payment to payroll taxes payable and this was booked just as salaries expense, your payroll taxes payable account keeps accumulating more and more balance and you never show the fact that those monies have actually been sent to the government. So this is how to do it correctly. We're going to record the first payment. It's an EFT say the date is March 1, 2010. We're going to call it payroll net pay. And we're going to book it based on the information we see here. I'm going to zero this out because I've done this before. I want to show you how to do it. So the first thing you're going to do is you are going to put the net pay as the amount of the check. That's the amount that's actually going to come out of your account. So that is correct. Mistake that's made is that same amount usually gets booked here to the payroll account, the expense account, and that's where it's incorrect. The payroll expense is the gross pay, which in this example is the 9462.79. Then we have to deduct our withholdings 2298.90. So it's a minus, and then we have to deduct our medical, which is the 5450, also a minus. So these are amounts that we deduct from the gross pay to arrive at the net. Notice my expenses tab here, 7109.39, now matches the net pay. This is done correctly. Now let's save this, and notice that my payroll taxes payable account shows 229890. And that again is this amount here. It's also this amount here. Notice under the taxes, <clears throat> we have two columns that make it up employer and employee. So let's go and book this tax payment now, which is the second payment that comes out. Their EFT, same date. Payroll taxes, and again the answer is coming up from memory. We're gonna—I'm just copying and pasting from my Excel spreadsheet. Obviously, if you're looking at a piece of paper, you're just gonna have to key the amounts. 
But the employer's portion, the expense, is this 1393.63. Then we have to take what we took out of the employee's checks, send it to the government, along with the employer's share. So that's how we get the total of the 3692.53. It's actually made up of two amounts, and we have to split it up that way. So we record this check. And now notice payroll taxes payable are zero. There it is coming in. There it is going out. There it is from the previous time I recorded it that I wasn't happy with. So again, just to review, my payments are made up of three. Last one is the payroll fees. I don't think I need to show you how to book that. We're going to take the gross pay and we're going to subtract the deductions to arrive at the net pay. Then we're going to write a check for the taxes. We're going to split that up between the employer's share and the employee's share. The employer's share goes to an expense account. The employee's share is remitting what we took out over here. So it's the same payroll taxes, payroll, or payroll liabilities, or whatever you've got it called on your set of books. You don't necessarily need to have it broken out the individual categories shown here. This is what makes it up. Social Security, Medicare, federal withholding, state withholdings, disability. This is the total of all these. You will see on some sets of books that each of these categories is shown in the payroll liability section. It's not necessary in my experience. You only need one account for all the payroll liabilities. And that is pretty much how payroll gets booked in QuickBooks. That's the correct way to do it so that you report payroll at the correct gross amount and you report the right employer taxes. You also show the right amounts going in and out of payroll liabilities. That's how payroll has to be booked. Now you may be looking at a payroll report from a different company. The information is essentially going to be the same. It's just laid out differently. And normally what you're looking for is going to be the cash requirements report. That's the report that's going to give you this information. And you want to ask yourself uh, a few questions. Where's the gross payroll? Where are the deductions? And where are the taxes? And how are the taxes split between employer and employee? These are the things we need to look for so we can put this together in a way that QuickBooks can understand. I'll bring you back into the meeting here. Take you back to the upcoming events. Bring it back down to size for you. That's pretty much it, my friends. How to book payroll correctly. You'll be amazed how you can dazzle your employers or your clients when you start booking payroll correctly because it's amazing how few people really seem to understand this. I hope everybody's having a great week. Check back with us. Check our QuickBooks blog. Check our learning center. Check everything. And we'll be back with another great webcast, hopefully sometime in the next week. I'll see you online.